Uh, thanks, Jason. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for uh, for joining us this morning, uh, for giving up your time to uh, to listen to what we've got to say. Um, look, we, we we certainly, as a group, we're excited about the the series ahead uh, against a strong South African side, a uh, side that's ranked above us. As you know, we currently ranked seven, and South is ranked five and four in both uh, the T20s and ODIs. So we know we're up against uh, some stiff opposition, with some very good players, uh, but we're certainly excited about challenging ourselves. Uh, in playing against this this particular group, um, everyone, uh, all the players uh, are all fit and well. Um, there are a couple of uh, little little niggles, but but nothing um, that rules anybody out. Uh, and certainly, the players uh, have had some good preparation time. Uh, we've had some some reasonable training sessions uh, in Durban. Uh, the first couple were in small groups, uh, groups of uh, five and six. The first couple of days, uh, we had a, a full-on training session uh, yesterday in Peter Marisburg uh, as a whole group. So everyone's uh, so looking forward to, to what lies ahead. Um, and um, certainly from my own personal point of view, I'm also excited to see the players play now. We've been um, playing back in Pakistan since the, the middle of October. Um, so it's about feels about uh, the right time where we, we can match ourselves uh, against uh, female opposition from, from uh, another, another country. Thank you, David. So now we'll start taking the questions. Uh, I just want to ask all of those who are willing to, who want to ask questions to please mention in the chat or raise their hand. Uh, Ali, you, uh, we can start with you. David, we never won an ODI series, whether we played in South Africa or in UAE. Only one draw series with the South African team. Right now in current situation, what is the strategy of yours to that how to defeat South Africans in their homeland? Oh look, um, th thanks, Harry. Look, I think the, uh, the, the look, they're, they're a very good side. So I mean, we, we're going to have to play play very well in terms of the strategy. If you think about T Twenty cricket, um, it's it's a game that challenges you uh, because it's it's a game played under pressure because there's there's limited balls. So you have to make sure that a your plans are pretty clear, but more importantly that you execute really well uh, because of the pressure of, of limited balls. So in terms of a strategy, it's about us going out and playing um, positive cricket. Um, looking to to take the game on, um, whether that's with a bat, the ball, or in the field. Um, so what does that mean? That means you know if you see the ball, let it dive and stop, then dive and stop it. Take the positive approach. Try and take that catch. Uh, look to score off off every ball that you face. Um, and you know, with the ball, you're looking to take wickets. So it's a it's a positive approach to 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 the game. Um, I think I for me personally, that needs to be mirrored across not just T20 but also 50 over cricket. So. In terms of defeating them, they're a very good side with very good players, with match winners. You know, if you think about the recent Women's Big Bash in Australia, there was eight representatives from South Africa playing in that competition. So their players are used to playing um, in these major competitions um, and, and have had experience of that over a number of years. So uh, it will be a challenge for us, but I think from our own personal approach, and that's the important thing, it's about taking the game on um, and playing in a positive way, in a positive manner. Uh -huh. We'll now take question from uh, Loni, uh, then Abdullah, and then Ayush in this order. Um, morning, David. This is Loni from um, ENCA. Um, just, I Hello, missed Tony. part of your. I missed part of your opening statement. So apologies if I'm repeating um, myself here, um, or you've okay. said this already. Um, just in terms of um, getting back to playing, I think Pakistan last played um, at the T20 World Cup International Cricket, that is. How much cricket have you been able to play and how much of a challenge has it been to get things together, given what is happening at the moment? The Proteas have also had their own challenges trying to get international cricket going as well. Yeah, uh, no, that, that's a good question. No, the we uh, Pakistan last played uh, internationally back in the back end of the World Cup, so the T20 World Cup back in February March. Um, so it was a, a nine or ten month. It's been a nine or ten month gap. Um, I took over the, this role three months ago, and I I joined um, the first women's camp back since lockdown in in Pakistan. So that was in the middle of middle of October. So the girls had already been on camp for two weeks, which I think began on the somewhere around the 6th or 7th of, of October. So I joined on, on the 19th. So that's when the girls have, uh, fortunately, that the PCB have been um, very supportive of, of the women's game and trying to help us out as much as possible. Um, so we had an initial camp then. Um, we've also had a T20 domestic competition, which ran uh, in Ralpindi in November uh, over a two and a half week period. Um, and prior to arriving in, in Durban, we'd been on a, um, a three week camp in, um, in Karachi as a group. 
So we have managed to get um, get together and get players together. Um, so we've been we've been fortunate from, from that point of view. Uh, we have managed to play games amongst ourselves uh, and against some boys teams, but obviously we haven't had um, any uh, any international games within that period. Just like everyone else around the world, so I mean, obviously we're in we're in difficult times with with COVID, and it makes it difficult to organise and structure tours um, and fixtures. Uh, but that's where we are at the moment. Uh, Abdullah. Uh, morning, David. Firstly, congratulations on landing the job and good luck for your first series. Um, which form of the game is going to be your primary focus? Uh, is it going to be 50 overs looking ahead to the Women's World Cup in New Zealand next year? Or is it going to be 20 overs looking ahead to the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham next year? Yeah, um, yeah good question. Look, for, for us, obviously, the, the first priority is, uh, is June, July in Sri Lanka and the qualification for the 50 over World Cup. So on this trip, we are playing both ODIs and T20 games and look we, we're going to approach uh, our approach is we want to win all six games so that's that's pretty straightforward um but you know we, we're not going to um so we'll we'll pick teams that we feel can win win both those but you know we have been looking at obviously the 50 over competition because that's that's priority for us uh, we need to um, give ourselves the best opportunity qualifying in in june and july in sri lanka for the world cup in uh, in february in new zealand ayush Uh, hi, David. So uh, my question is now that you've spoken about taking the Pakistan team to the top four in the rankings. Uh, this might be a first international assignment, but having seen the players in the domestic competitions and the training camps, as you had mentioned, what has been your assessment of the team? And what are the specific areas of improvement that you're looking at in the upcoming series as a pathway to the larger goal that you had mentioned? Yeah, uh, look at the uh, in terms of the, the the group. I think that I think they're a skilled group. Um, as I've said all along, that's um, having watched Pakistan over over the last couple of years. I first saw them back in 2018 when Australia were playing Pakistan in Malaysia, uh, because there were some some Australian players that I was coaching uh, for, for in Victoria that were were on that trip. So I, I took a close interest in that. So this, I've seen the for me the skill level has always been there. I guess the the, the, the the question or challenge I have for, for the playing group is the consistency. So how can we become you know, more consistent um, and raise our standard um, and expectations around how we play? So that's, that's the sort of the, the, main, um, the main focus for us as, as a group. It's something that we've talked about. We want to play um, well, but we want to play well consistently. And that, that's, that's the challenge. So it's about our performance. Uh, we track that back to training. So I think the training environment is really important to make sure that we're challenging ourselves in training. Uh, we're making the most of every training opportunity, um, especially now uh, in the current situation where um, with COVID that you, you're getting limited opportunities. Thank you, David. Uh, sorry, welcome. Apologies for that. Um, yeah, look, we've, um, as I said, with 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 the focus areas, for me, the skill levels there, that's never been uh, been the question or, or, or any question uh, that should be troubling us. It's more around the, the consistency in how we play. So, you know, say so we, we try to really focus in on, on the training environment and making sure that we're making the most of those training opportunities, putting ourselves in match situations as much as possible. But but looking at our, our own individual and team expectations and, and bottom line is we, we, we sit seventh for the moment. Um, and um, we don't want to remain at seventh. We want to, we want to get as high as we can, and that's why this series against South Africa is uh, is is, a, is uh, an important one because it gives us a chance to gauge ourselves against a team that's ranked higher across both formats. So the next uh, three questions will be taking from Fezan Lakhani, uh, Mohammed Suheb, and Muzammil. Fezan, over to you. Thanks, Hassan. Uh, David, uh, we have already heard a lot about uh, how uh, these biosecure bubbles are affecting men's cricketers. What's the feeling in the women cricket, cricketers and uh, cricketers' uh, dugout? Uh, are they equally frustrated due to this uh, biosecure bubble? And what are the added challenges uh, due to this all, you know, limitation uh, because of COVID? Yeah, look, I, I, we, it's it's pretty fresh for us, I guess, because we've um, we've had camps where we have been in um, in, in bubbles, but uh, it's been it's been 
I guess not as strict as as some of the men's bubbles that that we see uh, in terms of that self isolation in your room for two weeks, uh, which has been obviously well documented in in the men's game. So it's a little bit new for us in terms of the severity of it, if you like. Um, this this current phase that we're in at the moment in South Africa, yes, it has been um, there has been I wouldn't say challenges, but we've had to manage ourselves differently. So training in small groups, so groups of uh, five and six with players and support staff. Uh, moving separately as groups as opposed to a whole group. Um, but, you know, the, the reality is if, if we're to get cricket, we need to adhere to this. Um, the, unfortunately, this this virus is is causing problems the world over. There's people dying in the world. So we, we have to just make sure that we're doing the right thing um, and just get on with it. If we want to play cricket, then we have to we have to give ourselves the best opportunity uh, to make sure that we can play cricket. And, and unfortunately, at the moment, um, due to the situation, this these are one of the... Uh, areas that we need to address and, and stick to and, and one work with. Uh, to help. Uh, thanks, Essen. Uh, David, talk us through Pakistan's uh, middle order uh, specifically because uh, Bisma Maruf is not playing and, you know, uh, middle order will obviously get a hit. So talk talk about Omaima Sohail, for instance, or Muniba Ali, uh, who have been up and down the betting order since their debut and uh, where are they going to bat and how important are they to Pakistan's chances? Uh, yeah, like obviously you mentioned Bismar, that that's, uh, goes up saying that, you know, you lose your captain. Um, it's a big loss, but not just the leadership on and off the field, but also the runs that she scores. Um, I think the confidence that she brings to the group when, when she's playing, but again, yeah, that's unfortunately that that's the situation we find ourselves in. Um, and that's reality. She's, she's not here. So, what it does do, and this is the, the key thing to me, it gives other people an opportunity to, to, to step up, but also gives a, an opportunity for um, for new faces to appear and, and, and grab that opportunity. So in a way, it's, um, it's, it's disappointing, but it's also, it gives us a chance to look at someone else. Um, in terms of the players that you mentioned, yes, they're, they're, they're young players, they're talented players. Um, we... Uh, where, where they'll bat, they'll probably be uh, top order as opposed to middle order. Um, I think, you know, the middle order, we've got, you know, Javeri Khan, uh, Anita Dar and Ali Riaz as so, sort of th three um, and Kena Imtiaz now coming into that group. So there's there's a sort of our, our middle order players. I see Omaima and, and Maniba being being the top order. They're young players. Again, they've got ability and, and, and talent, but it's, it's up to them now to grab the opportunity that they... Um, They'll probably be be handed. Muzammil, um, we'll take a question from you, and then we'll end with the question from Loni. Uh, David, I just want to ask that uh, you mentioned uh, right here uh, the name of Ali Arias. Just want to know that uh, you have been with the team for last couple of weeks. Uh, what did you feel like? Uh, I'm talking about power hitters. Like if uh, if we see South Africa, the way they play, like Australia, the the way they play uh, fast cricket, modern day cricket, we talk about. So, what do you think? How many players do you have who can just accelerate your score um, after 15 or 20 overs and T20s and obviously like in ODIs, uh, last over games when uh, players come and bat uh, fastly to raise the score yeah look, i think we have um we probably have a couple of play I, I, you mentioned Ariya. she's a very good striker of the ball uh we also have aisha nazim who's a good striker of the ball so those so ali is obviously a little more experienced than than, than than aisha as an example so we do have players that that can clear the ropes we don't have as many as say some of uh some of the countries around the world um, but it's more for, for me that, that the boundary hitting and all the power hitting is more around that um, that confidence in taking on the boundary and getting and hit, hitting pockets for four, as opposed to worrying about who can hit it, you know, 15 rows back. Um, it's you know your boundary count goes up with um, not necessarily with power hitters, but players that execute um, execute strut, strut shots that they they um, boundary options that they they can play very well uh, and areas that they can target. So I think it's um, I don't want to get too caught up in, in, in saying, oh, we need to have players that can hit the ball out of the park. Yes, of course, that helps. Uh, but it's, all, it's, it's about scoring off as many balls as you can and, and actually being more consistent with um, the execution of bad balls that you get. Um, so we're, we're certainly, uh, it's an area that we, as a side, probably haven't scored as many boundaries as we would like uh, in competitions. 
Um, so it's an area that we've sort of looked at to target and areas that we've looked to target. But um, but yes, it does help if you if you got if you got six hitters. Um, but I still feel you know, the players that can execute bound four boundary options um, are are just as uh, as just as beneficial. All right, we'll take the last question now. Um, hi, David, again. Um, so the men's proteas are in Pakistan at the moment. Has any of that featured in, in the um, conversations um, with your players at the moment? Uh, not, not, not that I'm aware of. I, th I think it's um, because we've just been focused on what, on what we're doing here. Um, I mean, the girls do. They obviously are, are aware of what's happened, uh, what happens in the, in, in the male program, if you like, um, because... Pakistan's got a, a, a rich history of, of cricket, and it, it is in it is in the culture. Um, so everyone does talk about cricket, but I think the girls have just been really focusing on um, on what we're doing here at the moment, and uh, what we're focusing on, and what lies ahead for us. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today.